everyone, thank you for joining us today for our daily devotional. I want to share a few thoughts with you today on this phrase, God is for me. There are a number of worship songs that we sing today uh, that repeat this phrase that God is for us. Paul asked this question in Romans 8, 31. He said, if God is for us, who can be against us? You see, God is for us. He's on our side. He's our friend. He has adopted us and he has given us his spirit. Paul asks the question here, if God is for us, who can be against us? Who can injure us? Who can harm or destroy us? The world may be against us, and we know that Satan, the enemy of our souls, is against us. But their power to destroy us is taken away. God is stronger than all our foes. He can and he will defend and save us. The psalmist writes in Psalm 117, which, by the way, is the shortest chapter in the whole Bible says this, Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you people of the earth. For he loves us with unfailing love. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. He goes on in chapter 118, verse 5, and says, In my distress, I prayed to the Lord, and the Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is for me, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Yes, the Lord is for me. He will help me. God's unfailing love endures forever is what he says and he repeats multiple times in chapter 118. You see, we're persecuted and hated by the world, but God loves us with an unfailing love and he has called us to love him. Romans 8:28 says, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. He who is infinitely wise will direct us. He who is infinitely powerful will protect us. He who is infinitely good will save us. God is for us. God is for you. The psalmist says in Psalm, 1, in Psalm 27, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? In chapter 46, he says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. In Psalm 56, verse 9, he says, This I know, God is on my side. God is for me. He says, I trust in God, so why should I be afraid? And in Psalm 121, he says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. God is for me, and God is for you. And, and here is what you gain through God. You see, God is sovereign. He is over everything. He is untouchable. He's matchless. Nothing can match his glory, his strength, his power, his might and knowledge, his forgiveness, his blessings and riches, his love, mercy and grace, he, his omnipotence, omniscience, his omnipresence, his skill, his handiwork, his greatness, his holiness and righteousness, his availability and sensitivity, his patience, his tenderness, his peace, joy, self-control, graciousness, his gentleness and kindness, his faithfulness, goodness, his bravery and consistency, strategy, his intentionality, his humility, his willingness, his sympathy, his empathy, his beauty and authority, and anything else that you can think of, God is awesome. Romans 8.31 says, What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? And the answer to that question is, no one. The reality is this, we can and we will be persecuted, will be hurt and disappointed here on this earth. It's going to happen. There will be trials and temptations and troubles. But if you truly believe in Jesus Christ, if you've made him Lord and Savior of your life, you've been saved, set free and forgiven, you can have complete confidence that God is for you. In verse 38, Paul uses this language. He says, and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. In 2 Timothy 1.12, he tells Timothy, he says, I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. You see, when I realize that God is for me, I don't hide from God, I run to God. In Genesis chapter 3, uh, Adam and Eve are in the garden and they've eaten the fruit and, and they've hidden themselves. But the Lord called to Adam. He said, where are you? And Adam answers, I, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. 
You see, sin causes us to hide and turn from God, but God wants us to come to him. Proverbs 18.10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. Matthew 11.28, come to me all who are weary and heavy burdened. Matthew 19.14, let the little children come to me and don't stop them. When I realize that God is for me, I don't live for God's approval. I live from his approval. Romans 5.8 says, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We spend so much time trying to get people to notice us. We want their approval. But you see, God accepts us. He loves us and he approves of us already. He demonstrated his love for us that while we were still sinners, you see, we need to live from his approval. And when I realize that God is for me, I don't fear what happens to me because I know that God is working in me. Philippians 2.13 says, it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. And we've already read Romans 8.28. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. In James chapter one, he says, consider it or count it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds, because the testing of your faith builds perseverance and endurance, and it develops you into uh, who he wants you to be, making you complete, not lacking anything. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. Let him amaze you, astonish you, astound you with his love. He is indescribable. His grace is amazing. His love is overwhelming. You see, God is actually for all people. That's you, that's me, but it includes even those who don't know him, those who don't want to know him, and those who don't even care about him. 2 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is patient, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God's word is filled with promises reminding us that he is for us. He is with you and he will never leave you or forsake you. He has perfect peace for you. He has plans for you to prosper you, to give you hope and a future. He cares for you. He will provide a way out for you when you're tempted. He will meet all of your needs. His grace is sufficient for you. And if you lack wisdom, just ask and he will give it generously. Come near to God and he will come near to you. All these are promises. So listen, you have inestimable, incalculable, immeasurable, unfathomable, infinite wealth. And not the kind of mansions uh, and money or yachts and luxury cars, but the wealth of the presence, power, purpose, and promises of God made known to us in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, All God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes and through Christ our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for his glory. This is, this is what he says, 2 Corinthians 1, 20 to 22. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us and set his seal of ownership on us and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. So put your hope and trust in him today and every day because he is for you and he will never change because his word says that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. God, I pray today that you would help us to know and that we would put our complete trust in you, knowing, God, that you are for us, that you're working everything for good in our lives. Lord, we trust you in your ability, in your power, in your authority, and your sovereignty in our lives. You love us, you care about us, you're with us, and you're for us. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name.